Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. It's time for the Bonnie Cher Show, a whirlwind of wit, wisdom, celebrity, and the boomer life. With a little bit of this, and a lot of that, and so much more you don't want to miss, here's Bonnie! Well, thank you, and hello, and welcome, and thank you for tuning in and joining us today. Uh, I'd like to thank Wayne Cobham for my super-duper theme song. I am Bonnie Sheer, and I'm going to be your host through the world of celebrity, through the great boomer generation, and the world of type 1 diabetics and our community. Today's guests are the Darling, darlings of gay boomers, we have Brian and darling and Evan, darling, darlings, and Alyssa Podberth, a member of the T1D community. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, please feel free to call in at 323-843-2826. And, or you can follow us on Twitter at hashtag B-S-H-E-R radio. So, now let's settle in and please say hello to my guests, Evan Darling and Brian Darling. Hello, darlings. Hello. Hello. You have no idea how thrilled I am that your last name is Darling. Oh, my God, could have I have gotten in trouble if it was anything else. <laughs> so, I mean, of course, the first question everybody is going to say is, but you don't look alike. Explain why you don't look alike. All right. Well, I was searching my brother, Brian Darling, no relation, on the internet. I was looking for him. I was trying to find out some information about an article he wrote or something. And this Brian came up, who is the absolute polar opposite of my brother. So I had to divulge deeper and go in and try to contact him and say, hey, you know. And how long ago is that? It's about oh, six about months a year ago. ago. Six, six, eight Have months you ago. Have you seen Something <laughs> like that, yeah. The time's just flown by. I just picked him up at the airport. And he picked me up on the internet and I picked him up at the airport. No. It was kind of funny. You know, we're, we're just, wait, I have a brother named Brian Darling. So we met. Does Brian know about this? He, Brian? Found, oh, yeah. he found me oh, instead. Yeah. Aw, what a lucky break for both of you then, huh? I'm sure, he, I'm sure he knows about him, but I don't think they communicated very much in the past. Does <laughs> brother Brian know about me? I'm sure he does. You have the same name. And he's a public figure as well, so. We trade on the top of the Google list. Sometimes I'm on top and sometimes he's... He's lately. And he's wait, I don't do that kind of show. <laughs> <laughs> number one and number two. How about that? Oh no, I don't know. <laughs> I know nothing. You, I have a feeling you know a whole <laughs> lot more. I get it. <clears throat> Pardon me. That as I see you guys, you're you're more grounded. You're you're the earth. You are up here with me in the air. Yeah, I'm a little crazy when it comes. I to don't stuff. mean it in that way. I just see. I mean, you do. Business management, am I correct? Oh yes, I'm a celebrity business manager. Well, yeah, so I'm, so that's I'm the that Hollywood. bottom line, numbersy thing, which right. I do everything I can to possibly <laughs> avoid. I am left brain, like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, and, and this is your right brain counterpart. That works nicely. Actually, yeah. I mean, I mean, well, I think. Don't you think that's why sometimes that's that's where the magic comes from? That somehow within that enormous universe of people out there. Look what happens from something as small as, I want to know something about my brother. Now, 
Being an only child, I've never had the opportunity to Google any of my siblings, but because I figured I'd know. But okay, that's a whole other show. Um, you guys are involved in so many different things. Um, what's really floating your boat and exciting you right now in your life? Well, right now, um, we're trying to work on a TV show, which we're going to do a travel adventure series where Brian and I go on adventures, doing all kinds of fun things that some people don't think they can do because they're getting up there in age or they're not that fit. And then you have people that are our age and they're very fit. And so we're going to try and go on these little trips and take our audience with us on this crazy adventure and do different things, very fit things, you know, crazy things, jumping out of airplanes, you know, hang gliding. Do your guests have to jump too? No, they don't. Oh, good. But there'll be activities for everyone of every activity level. And we're going to do a lot of domestic stuff in this country. We're going to travel abroad and... How exciting! Find. What a fun we'll show! Be, we'll be all over the place, and we're taking our viewers with us. Oh, I think that's wonderful. Oh, yeah. um, also, as I was reading about you, um, something that really tugged at my little heartstrings—they're um, not so little; they're pretty big—is the fact that you are both so involved in making the world a better place, a more loving place, a more gracious, giving, and inviting place through your work um, in anti-bullying. Um, That's correct. I was bullied unmercifully as a kid, and uh, I was very heavy set. It was before the nose job. <gasps> oh. Did I let that go? <laughs> I was 14. You came out of the closet, I came out of the nose. Yeah. It was, <laughs> 14 was a big year. Um, so tell me about that. What, what, what's in your heart? Where did that come from? What do you do? And is there anything that our listeners can do to maybe be of assistance? Well, yes, there's quite a bit. Um, my background, I, I worked as a, I have a long story of when I came out and didn't have see eye to eye with my parents and I was displaced from my home growing up. But through life, I learned you work hard and you can get somewhere. Just, you know, I worked as a mechanic. I worked up to selling a landscaping business and I raced cars through my whole life. I can tell that whole story too, but um, I got really into it. The more wealthy I became at, you know, working in life and I realized I was actually really good at it I won a few championships and decided you know I'm gonna I'm gonna go pro in 2007 I decided I'm gonna go race pro I signed a couple of contracts with a couple of companies and racing cars and I said you know what before um, before my first race I'm gonna come out and be the first out professional race car driver and ta-da that's what I did and that's but, what he did but doing that I wanted to bring something very important with me you know, by doing this, I'm just not, I just don't want to be that guy. I don't want to, you know, I'm not looking right, for right. personal fame for that reason. I like racing cars. I mean, I really, it's horrible to say I really don't care about the media and stuff behind it, but I really do because I know I can do some good. So I brought uh, companies like the Trevor Project and anti-bullying programs and suicide prevention programs <laughs> with me to try to bring light to it. Just mentioning it and being there gives people the thoughts and the ideas that there is help out there. And, you know, if we save one kid, one person from, you know, destroying something beautiful, it's, you know, it's, it's all worthwhile. Whether I make it or not, it's worthwhile because I got my message out there. Well, with and a name so. like Darling, I mean, you can imagine, you know, <laughs> you know, it's not the, it's not the most, uh, it's not the most fun to have the name Darling when you're a little kid. <laughs> Stand up and say your last name first. That was the worst part. And then if you and then, and then if you're not so great at sports and things anyway, you know, just coincidentally with you know, kids are cruel. The worst. And they the don't worst. know they're being cruel. Oh, but I beg cruel. your I beg to differ. Little girls. in high school, you know, the mean girls and the mean kids, they it know they're being in, mean. It, but it little starts kids. in grade school. But they yeah. learn it from somewhere. Right. So we we exactly. developed a, t a very thick skin, you know, both of us. And you know, I was born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, you know, and that was in Andover, Mass. M you know, Middle America. I moved out here when I was twenty, and I I wanted to be in the entertainment business, so I took a whole different path. 
um, that Evan did. But when we met, we realized that we have, you know, we're in many ways we're very different, and in other ways we are so alike it's stunning. So as we got to know each other better, we div- we realized that we both have a passion for adventure travel and. You know, he wants to race, and we can incorporate that into the into our travels as well. So we decided to create a, a, a TV show. Yeah, and it's kind of fun. We, yeah. Our interactions can sometimes get a little crazy. I can see that. Crazy. I can see that. Well, he gets a little crazy sometimes. Oh, I need he to, gets you know, a little really crazy. crazy. He'll drive you, and, you nuts. Know, a, yeah, he'll, he'll drive, drive you nuts. See, exactly. I, I, I understand where you're coming from, Brian, but see... Evan and I ride that same <laughs> that same part of the train, you know. Yep. But it's it's about the balance, isn't it? I mean, I can't imagine two of me. I think everybody I need, looks for balance in their lives, and they oh, do that through the, the people. Oh, only the sane they... ones. No, no, no. There are people who make a living out of be, being nut jobs. Trust me. <laughs> oh, um, that's yeah. where they feel the most comfortable. And they just decide they'll, they'll just handle it that way. But I don't get that from the two of you. I, I mean, even from, you know, obviously we haven't met before today. And what I know about you is what I've read. And everything I've read is just so come to fruition by meeting you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you were in here, you will f- you would feel this palpable <laughs> sense of Brian and Evan's complete passion and dedication to what they're doing. And I think the fact that you're allowing yourselves to, at the same time, create something that will be fun for others, but satisfies your souls and your heart. That's what we call have fun and make money. Yeah, <laughs> right. I mean, right. I'm, I'm all about the fun, the money part. Yeah, but shh, shh, you know. I, don't say that to me. I <laughs> money? Well, Did someone say money? No, well, no, money no. money is very fun. You can get all kinds of fun stuff with money. But yeah, but when you're a magician and all you can do is make money disappear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm very good at that. Well, I told you, hey, you and I were separated, sort of a. You know how yeah. you make a really small fortune? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. You start with a big one and you go race cars. Um, That's how you make a small fortune. Really? <laughs> is it like horse racing? It makes horse racing look cheap. Really? Yes. What's the most? I mean, obviously the vehicles themselves are pricey, and well, to the, keep them, especially the, if you beat up on a car like I do. But you yeah, guys, well, are, cars are very. What expensive. kind of cars do you race? Are you in those formula deals? No, or? no. I'm a road racer. I, uh, I I race production class cars: BMWs, Porsche, Acura, Volkswagen. You name it. I'll race. And I bet they're all five speed, right? Uh, six speed. I don't. Well, I, I I never even knew about that. My point is, unless they made them an automatic, I don't get to do it. Most of them have three pedals. <laughs> three pedals? Yeah, the clutch, the brake, and the oh, gas. Oh, a clutch! Right. You know. So you can tell. Huh? And you can find me in the luxury box. <laughs> Thank watching you. Watching the race. Thank with you. Bonnie. That's that's right. Do they wear? Ho- I mean, I know I wear a hat to the horse race, but not so much to the car race. Huh? Well, we can just oil me right up. <laughs> <laughs> It does turn out very expensive, though. The cars are very pricey, and there's no what, recourse. How, you crash kind of, it. Yeah, it, what kind of lifespan do they have? Um, they generally, if the car is not destroyed on the track and it's used, it's it'll run about four years before they... Before but, they sell it through CarMax? No. <laughs> <laughs> before they get timed out and they're no longer competitive or a manufacturer comes out with a new car, that's... It sounds like an, an, an aging actress. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I, I get timed out. And there's a thing called vintage racing, too. Where we race oh. really old cars, and that's a lot oh. of fun. That's where the fun for me is. I oh, love I racing like the old that. stuff. And if the cars it's driver are... in a car. There's no traction control... You know, ABS, you know, electronic engine management. There's none of that. There's carburetors and drivers. <laughs> and and no onboard and, computers. Nope. And bias ply tires. You know, it's just, you know. How did you, I, I have to go back to this. What got you started racing cars? I've always been competitive. I mean, if they had big wheel races when you're two, I would have been the <laughs> champion big wheel racer of the planet. <laughs> racing sleds, racing matchbox cars, you name it. I've always just loved and hungered for competition. I don't know why. It's just been fun for me. And I, you know, I, I go to a race and I see all these people that are 
they they're, they have all these different routines and these different attitudes towards competition. Right. And to me, it's inviting. I want to. If, if you beat me, I respect you. I think it's great. Okay. Now, what did, what did you do to beat me? I'm going to learn that. I'm going to figure it out, and I'm going to beat you next time. And it's funny because I'll have this great competition with with people, and I'll be all excited when they win, and I'll go over to congratulate them, and when I win, I go to talk to them, and they like blow me off and get mad at me. It's like, wait a minute. You passed me. You, you threw the car down. That was not safe. You knocked me out of the way. I say, yeah, you know well, the, what? The would ego. you have done? I say, would you have done the same thing to me? Oh, you and want they competition, look at, honey? They, come to Hollywood. They look at you like you have three heads, and you say, well, of course you would have done the same thing to me because you're competitive and you're but a racer. It's the same I want thing in show in. business. You, if you get a, a gal, you know, a gaggle of girl singers together, they'll kill each other. <laughs> you know, and who does it better? But but you're absolutely right. What you do is you learn from them. Exactly. You right. learn from them. Be better. Maybe Donald could. I don't know. I, I, wasn't, uh, yeah. I, I yep. promised Zip. I wasn't going to say mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. I lied. Zip. Um, we're going to have, <laughs> yeah, right? Um, I'm going to need to wrap up our interview, but um, would you do me a favor, please, guys? Tell our audience how they can follow your activities is there a URL, the website, Facebook, tw do you tweet, do you, how do they find you, these people? Well, my website is, uh, it's very difficult uh, website. It's briandarling.com. Um, so that's where you can find me. I'm also very prominent on LinkedIn. And, uh, of course, follow the Brian Darling Show on Facebook. And uh, I've got a, uh, some stuff on Daily Motion. Uh, dot com forward slash the Brian Darling show uh, if you want to see a little bit more of me in the host chair um, and Evan's got a fan page on Facebook uh, Evan Darling and I'm a fan I'm a fan <laughs> yeah I mean that's another good thing about Darling is if you just Google uh, Evan Darling or Brian Darling we're we're pretty easy to find <laughs> yeah I have just, a, a Evan Darling fan page on just Facebook just make sure you get the right Brian yeah Evan Darling fan page on Facebook, um, Evan Darling on Facebook, or uh, Evan M. Darling on Twitter, at Evan M. Darling on Twitter. I'm on Instagram, too. I think it's Evan Darling 71 which was my racing number in the past. I haven't um, gotten to Instagram yet. I'm getting there, but I have a, a website I'm going to be putting together. I just have to f figure out the URL to something that's fun and easy to remember. But we're not there yet. And then, of course, we'll have a website when our show, you know. Hits, so you'll make sure to let can. me know what's going on, the timing of it. Love to have you guys back on as we get closer to that. Let us know. Of course. Stay in touch. Um, you go back to Colorado when? I leave on Saturday. I head back to Colorado. But what? I'm coming back and forth. It's so cheap to fly back and forth. Do you live, are, you in, are you in Boulder? Where are you? I'm in Boulder. We love Boulder. It's utopia there. It really is. When amazing. I was living in Santa Fe, New Mexico, is when I really got it about Boulder. It was a seven hour drive up the five through mm -hmm. all that windy stuff. But boy, coming down and into beautiful place to There's live. There's so much to do. The, the shout out Boulder. Yeah, the economy is great. It's just a wonderful place to be. Well, if I didn't have so much fun. Right here in Los Angeles doing my show here on UBN Radio. I'd be your neighbor. Come on. <laughs> Welcome anytime. Neighbor. Oh, you're dear. Guys, Brian, Evan, thank you so very much for being with us oh. today. Thank you, Bonnie. Great to be here. It was our pleasure. You are listening to The Bonnie Share Show. So please join the conversation. I'm going to invite you again to call 323-843-2826. Or you can follow the hashtag, that's hashtag, BeShareRadio on Twitter. Coming up on the show is a uh, trip to my soapbox. Um, that is basically my take on who got it right and a shout down is who I believe got it terribly, terribly wrong and should be ashamed of themselves. Um, let's go to break with a new song um, that was written by and performed by 
Andy, I'm sorry, Andy, I've got Andy on the brain now. I apologize. His actual name is Pete Cronowit. And um, we will be playing this song until the election. And it is called Change is Gonna Come. Take it away. <laughs> Just a lone voice standing in a field Say no one will listen but change is gonna come Who am I? Just one person with a camera on my phone There's no place left to hide now Change is gonna come Change is gonna come All it takes is just your voice Change is gonna come Who am I just a policeman Breaking down that big blue wall I may just lose my job But change is gonna come Who am I politician who won't take those corporate funds I may not get elected without some change from everyone change is gonna come change is gonna come all it takes is just your voice change is gonna come who am I just a class clown pointing toward the truth providing some catharsis yeah change is gonna come who am I just a schoolgirl on a bus in Pakistan the gunman's bullet didn't kill me and change is gonna come Change is gonna come Change is gonna come All it takes is just your voice Change is gonna come Who am I just a tech nerd Working for the NSA Releasing all those secrets And now change is gonna come I guess what we are going to have to do is ask Alyssa to come back on a different day and make sure we have a better and stronger signal at that time. Um, I really feel badly about this, but not much I can do about it. Okay, well, I, I guess I will share my story as we try and work on this. Um, I was 15 when I was diagnosed. I had felt really drained for quite a while, and I noticed that I could sit down to a meal and polish off a 64-ounce bottle of soda with absolutely no trouble. It'll be better when I put these on. Um, I went to school, I got to my first period class, I really started to feel poorly. I stood up to go to the school nurse and I passed out cold. Um, somebody walked me to the school nurse who determined that uh, any, any young woman 
of 15 years old in Beverly Hills who was passing out was most probably pregnant. And so she sent me home. And my folks came home and found me passed out yet again on their sofa. So off to the doctor I went, and they diagnosed me. And the next thing I knew, I was in the hospital. Um, 15 was an odd age. It was just at the point in time where I was starting to become more social. I wasn't allowed to really date yet, but we went out in groups. And um, while everybody else was enjoying their cheeseburger and chocolate shake and fries, I was ordering a green salad with zero-calorie salad dressing. So that made me feel different. Um, I felt different for a while. I had a very uninteresting and unremarkable first 30 years of the disease. Um, I've been a diabetic now for 49 years. Um, I would at some time in the very near future like to get into some of the uh, complications of living with the disease, which we haven't really done yet. But it's an important conversation for us to have, especially if we are talking about diabetics of the boomer age and older. Um, this is when they come on. I mean, there are some who are who are plagued with complications far earlier than I was. Um, but I don't like surprises, and I understand that a lot of doctors believe, you know, you just don't say anything about it and make everything very cushy and very nice and how normal your life is going to be. And I'm not sure that that isn't really doing a great disservice to the youngsters. I think that honesty is the way to go. Um, so that's my take on being a teenager with diabetes. And while I'm talking about this, to any of you moms out or dads out there of um, teenage diabetics, it's don't like cripple them. Don't cripple them. Don't stand Hello? over them. Hello? I think we're on. Alyssa, can you hear me? Still can't hear me. Is it we're getting no sound. Okay, so I'm going to go back to what I was saying until we can get Alyssa back on the air, or on the air. Um, you know, my mother used to do that. She followed me around. She looked in the garbage cans to see if there was actually a syringe. Had I used it? Had I taken an injection? And what does that do to the teenager? It instills in them the feeling that they aren't enough, that they aren't capable, that they require somebody else and I think personally it's a very bad message um, we have to take care of this disease our entire life and that continues even after our parents are gone um, so please that that would be my message today um, give your kids a break I understand your concern I'm a mom and a grandmom myself but, um, and I know the tendency is to want to protect them. Make them strong so they can protect themselves, please. Well, unfortunately, it does not look like I'm going to be able to connect with Alyssa today. Um, so in that case, I am going to jump ahead to my shout out and shout down. The shout-out today is to Joanne Lofermilo, who shares her 50-plus years of living di with diabetes in her book, The Savvy Diabetic, A Survival Guide. Um, I have to say that to this time and to this date, I don't think I've ever read anything that has been written as honestly, with such great intelligence and humor. Um, and what Miss Milo has actually done here is to conceive a real go-to guide, 
um, that's just chocked full of practical tips, invaluable insights, and inspiration. Um, one reviewer wrote, when I need a little inspiration or a good friend's shoulder to lean on, I pick up this book. You know what? From now on, I will too. Um, this is available on Amazon. I don't know where else, but I know about Amazon. And um, I think it's a great book for diabetics, for their families, for their friends, for anybody who really wants to know the skinny, if you will, on living with type 1. Thank you, Joanne. Now, for my shout down. Uh, I find that lately my inner Howard Beale can barely be contained. Um, if only we could all shun big pharma, little pharma, uh, the whole medical insurance companies, um, un until they come to the point where they realize that it's imperative that they lower the price of insulin. Um, I realize and I applaud the activists who are going to Congress, um, sending out alerts, but I'm still not convinced that that's enough. Um, so here's my idea. My idea is, you know, we have to ask for what we want, and um, Secretary Clinton has invited us to write to her if we have other issues that we would like her to light upon. And so, I'm going to do it. Um, and I ask for a lot of you, if all of you, if we, we have to make some noise. It's peaceful, and let's make the noise. So, grab a pencil, because I'm going to give you Hillary's address. It is 120 West 45th Street, Suite 2700, New York, New York, 10036. It might sound futile on its face, but hey, it worked in the miracle of 34th Street. Uh, and by the way, I'm sorry, but uh, I don't have Mr. Trump's address. Okay, if you have an opinion, uh, visit my blog at bonnieshare.com, black slash blog, and sound off. Well, we were never able to reach Alyssa. I'm really sorry. We will be back to you, Alyssa. But in the meantime, that is our show for today. I hope you will return next week for another 50 minutes of Celebrity, the Great Boomer Life, and the T1D community. Until then, please visit BonnieShare.com. Follow the number one Bonnie Share on Twitter and like the Bonnie Sings Lena fan page on Facebook. I again want to thank today's guests and, of course, you for sharing this time with me. Um, a special note of thanks to Corey Bone for this lovely topaz and 14 karat gold with a piece of hair. Sorry about that. It just makes it more real, right? Beautiful necklace, little shimmery kind of thing. Huh? Nice, nice, nice layering piece. So check Corey out. You can find him on Twitter at Crown and Anchor Jewelry, and you can also find him on Facebook. You can also find him on my website, BonnieShare.com. I think you'll really be glad that you do. Okay, then, uh, for my friends, old and new, probably you know by now that uh, Sammy Davis Jr. provided me with great friendship, great knowledge, uh, taught me a lot, for which I will always be grateful. Um, so, Sammy, I'm not sure if there are speakers in heaven, but if there are, this one's for you. Take us out.
whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong, whether I find a place in this world or never belong, I gotta be me. And I won't give up this dream of life that keeps me alive I gotta be me is waiting for me if I need the call I won't settle down won't settle for less as long as there's a chance that I can have it all I'll go it alone that's how it must be For somebody else If I'm not right for me I gotta be free somebody else if I'm not right for me I gotta be free 